what is up guys welcome back to another brand new video and today we're going to be talking about what disney plus announced or not disney plus but disney overall announced in this whole thing that happened yesterday where there's a lot and so there's going to be a lot to cover up and so i'm not going to be able to mention everything but i will be mentioning most things from marvel because that's what i'm hyped up from the most uh star wars i'm going to mention like two things pixar one thing and the other things i really don't want to talk too much about them because i don't want to make this video super super duper long uh i was planning on making a podcast episode but i just didn't have enough time to make notes for an episode so i just decided to do a face-to-face -face video where I just tell you guys a few of my thoughts and a few updates on like what's going on in Star Wars, Marvel, and everything. So let's get into Star Wars. But before we get into that, please hit that subscribe button. It only takes one second. And please click on the notification bells because it all makes a massive difference. And also please smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button again because some of you guys weren't listening that first time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But also after the video, please comment down below. What are your thoughts on all of this? Are you hyped up or are you not? But anyways, please just subscribe to the content because I upload daily film talk. I upload movie news movie reviews everything movie related so if you're a big fan of that then you're in the right place anyways and star wars there's number one thing that i'm very hyped up about in star wars there's a lot about star wars but i don't really want to get into it because a lot of series that star wars announced i wasn't that hyped up um so patty jenkins is going to direct a star wars film that to me sounds really great because to me that she's the best female director and not only that but one of the best directors in hollywood i don't have a particular list right now of who my favorite are but i do think patty jenkins would be in my top 10 of favorite directors right now in hollywood and i think you know her directing a star wars film that's great i love the wonder woman and i cannot wait to see star wars um and also we're getting an ashoka series uh ashoka tano i just recently began watching clone wars not the biggest fan of the series and i wasn't a big fan of ashoka tano but in the mandalorian episode she showed up in i was you know I was overwhelmed. I thought she was great in it. And, you know, I was like, if she had her own series, because there's a lot of rumors that she was getting her own series, I was thinking to myself, eh, why not? Why not? Why not give her own series? She was great. And, you know, why not? Like I said, why not? And another thing I think I, that was going to be obviously announced was The Mandalorian Season 3. Season 2 and Season 1 have been insanely successful. It's bringing in a ton of Disney Plus subscribers, including me. And so there, it'd be stupid not to think of putting putting you know a, a new se season for the mandalorian so it makes sense i'm hyped up i'm glad that they're they've uh, you know been able to do something like this and you know can't wait to see the next episode of the mandalorian which is actually today today's friday right um so yeah so pixar pixar announced a few things but only one thing really to me i want to talk about and that is chris evans it's going to be Buzz Lightyear in an origin film for Buzz Lightyear. Never did I think what happened. I guess it's our first Toy Story spinoff. And a lot of people right now are saying, oh, it's just a cash grab. Oh, they just want that sweet, sweet money. And I tell them, well, of course, every movie is made for money. They're not going to make a movie just for the fun of, that, of it. But anyways, I think Chris Evans was a great casting. Buzz Lightyear origin film. That to me sounds insanely cool. And I can't wait. Like, I genuinely can't wait for this. It looks pretty cool. And for those wondering what Buzz Like Your Origin film means, it basically means, you know, you know how Buzz Like Your in that first and second movie they explained how he was a toy of a popular character in a movie well they're gonna show that movie so we're gonna know why buzz Lightyear was so popular and you know to me i think that's actually a very brilliant idea um i mean it's like when we get avengers toys we get them because uh you know avengers are popular or same thing with batman same thing with superman same thing with an anime whatever whatever but Let's get into Marvel. So, three trailers dropped, and that was WandaVision, Falcon Winter Soldier, and Loki. And also the What If series. <laughs> oh my god, I almost forgot about that. But those were the four trailers dropped. And let me just get my quick I, uh, quick thoughts on this. The WandaVision trailer was really, really good. It was better than I expected. I remember I told people that that first trailer to me just didn't do the job. I was going to watch it regardless because I'm, an, I'm a Marvel fan, and I really want to see what they do with it. So, to me, that that first teaser was just not it but that second trailer was just so fantastically done and i cannot wait to see wandavision january 15th the first episode drops cannot wait and also the falcon and winter soldier trailer dropped that was really good it looked like a buddy cop but it didn't look as comedic it looked like it was a mean much more you know fighting criminals and to me these two look like movies they look like movies and that was the one thing that worried me when they announced these series because i'm like are they gonna look like your typical series because i don't want that to happen i want them to look like movies but of course not movies and i'm glad that they finally did it 
they're making them look like movies they look great because the cgi looks great the visuals look great and so yeah uh the loki trailer to me was the best trailer we got that loki trailer looks so good i can't wait to see tom hiddleston there was the trailer that hyped me up the most the music looked good and when they first announced the series i was thinking to myself really because i'm not the biggest fan of fake deaths um marvel you know of course i've always criticized how they just fake deaths and i always thought to and the number one character that they did that with was loki which they killed him off three times and you know i felt like infinity wars death should have been his last goodbye because that was a very depressing death but they're bringing him back and the trailer looked really good and he's from an alternate timeline this looks like he's going to go across the multiverse. The multiverse police will stop him or something like that. And, you know, I thought I thought it looks really cool. Uh, hopefully, at the end, he ends up in the Thor Love and Thunder timeline. You know, why not? And also, the next thing I want to talk about is the What, what If trailer. The What If trailer hyped me up a lot. When I first heard about it, I thought it was stupid. But now I'm like, this is cool. Especially after I, know, I knew T'Challa was going to be Peter Quill. I'm like, whoa, I did not expect that. And to me, that sounds pretty cool. I can't wait to see what they do with that. But yeah, and now the next thing is Fantastic Four has been confirmed. And this one, whoa, this one I did not expect. This one, I think I told people, but Fantastic Four was one of the films that hyped me up a ton that the MCU finally got. Because I... The first ever Marvel comic I've ever read when I was younger was a Fantastic Four comic. The first Marvel family. And so ever since then, they've had a place in my heart. Then I watched the the three films that they had, one of them being reboots, and I didn't like them. Um, when I was younger, I did like the first two films. But the older I got, the more I didn't like the film. It was kind of terrible. And, you know, they're, they're like your fun, bland comedies that you just don't care about after you watch it. But, you know, to me, that's not what Fantastic Four should be. It should be more like Guardians of the Galaxy. Not not saying like that. I'm saying more like they have this whole full story, like a thematic message, you know, characters with interesting backstories. And that's something that the three Fantastic Four films failed in. And, you know, I'm glad that Marvel finally got the Fantastic Four rights. And, uh, you know, the fact that they announced it here... You know, I'm glad, and now we finally got our first, uh, you know, logo for it. it looks so good. Uh, that four, like with the blue, and then the Marvel Studios logo in the middle. That looks cool. Uh, the one thing I'm not liking is John Watts directing it. Uh, John Watts, I'm sorry, um, I'm not the biggest fan of his projects. I mean, he filmed Spider-Man: Far From Home, and I've told people I don't like Far From Home that much, and I just, you know. <laughs> Not nothing against him. I do think he can still make a great film, but I'm just not the biggest fan of John Watts. I'm, I apologize, but anyways, the next film confirmed was Ant Man of the Wasp: Quantum Mania, and to me that title just sounded kind of stupid. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of t- of the two films, and a lot of people that know me personally know that I cannot stand Ant Man of the Wasp. Uh, I just can't stand that film, and you know this. You know, as much as I love Paul Rudd in it, uh, you know, I just don't like these Ant-Man films that much. I did like the first one, kind of. I did kind of like it. I thought it was an alright film. But in the, Ant-Man and the Wasp was kind of that dagger that made me think, yeah, I don't like these films that much. But, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I am glad they didn't call it Ant-Man and the Wasp 2 because that would sound confusing since it's the third film. And I'm glad they didn't call it Ant-Man and the Wasp 3 because that would also be confusing because there's no 2 also. So I am glad they gave it this separate title, Quantumania. Um, the one thing that did hype me up is the fact that they are announced that Kong the Conqueror will be in this film. And to me, I had never thought I'd ever see Kong the Conqueror in the films. And, you know, he's one of my favorite Marvel villains of all time. I've always said this. He's, you know, he's probably the biggest baddie in all the Marvel movies. And maybe one day we'll see him in the Avengers, you know, fighting the Avengers. And to me, that just sounds cool. And that was the only thing that really hyped me up. But... This next bit of news is actually my biggest, you know, the thing that hyped me up the most, and that was Christian Bale has been announced on what character. But before I say that, um, they did say Thor: Love and Thunder will be will be filming in January, which Christian Bale will be play, playing the villain in that film. And you want to know who he's playing? For those that don't know, he's gonna be playing Gore the God Butcher. And oh my God. That hyped me up so much. Uh, I was like, no way. Because I had said that Christian Bell would be playing Adam Warlock. I thought that for some reason. Uh, I thought he'd be in more films. But Gore the God Butcher. Oh my God, I'm hyped up. I 
I cannot wait to see what they do with this character. Christian Bell, I've said this before, he's my second favorite actor of all time. And, you know, I cannot wait to see what he does in this film. And I cannot wait, you know, what they do with him. And, you know, to me, that that to me is just a big part of news that I was like, yo, Christian Bell is Gore the God Butcher. I'm like, <sighs> the, when, the minute they announced him, the minute they casted him, I was like, yo. And I was like, oh. And I cannot wait for them to start filming because I want to see this film already. Thor Love and Thunder. A lot of people keep saying that title looks really stupid. But to me, it sounds like it's going to be a fun 80s kind of like. It feels like a rock band. I feel like there's going to be a lot of rock music. And I trust Taika Waititi with this project because, you know, Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite films uh, in the entire MCU. So I'm I'm happy with that. And also, this next bit of news is something that disappointed me, but I can fully understand why. And that is, they will not be recasting Black Panther and Black Panther 2. Kevin Feige announced that. I was disappointed. Uh, we're not going to be seeing CGI Chadwick e either. I'm going to assume they're just going to kill him off screen. And, you know, I guess the story will be about Shuri or M'Baku or someone picking up the mantle of Black Panther. To me, I really hope it's not Shuri. Um, nothing against her. It's just that... They've, they've said in the first film that the way they announce leaders is by hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. And so to me, having Shuri, the skinny little girl, going up against... Like, like, to me, that, that just sounds stupid. And also, we've ex they've explained that she's a science person and she wants to stay and make machines and weapons and all that. So it's, And also, I feel like killing off T'Challa off screen it's just it's gonna be disrespecting the character in so many ways and to me that's just not the way to go it's like killing him off off screen it's like we've had an entire film of him in an in infinity war and endgame with him and all you want to do is just kill him off off screen i can understand in a business sense and i miss chadwick r.i.p chadwick but i think the smartest thing would have been to cast it someone for black panther 2 my personal thing would have been to cast john john david washington as a black panther 2 i think he would have been great and i don't think even that's disrespectful to black panther because you know i feel like chadwick would have wanted someone to be t'challa and also we had so many more stories with t'challa to tell and to me i just don't like knowing that that they just you know decided not to recast him and i don't think it would have been disrespectful at all because i feel like chadwick would have wanted that and also he doesn't own the character stan lee owns the character and you know it just disappoints me knowing that they're not going to recast him but anyways i'm still going to watch this movie i hope it's the best story possible but another bit of news they did say something about spider-man but this is the only news that they said but they said dr strange 2 will be connected to spider-man 3 which is great i guess that's almost confirming that it's going to be both films are going to be multiverse films which is great disappointed that they didn't say anything about spider-man like no title uh no toby mcguire announcement or anything like that not even the confirmation of electro and and doc ock both being in this film but you know uh that's sony's job because sony technically still is the one making this or the one that still has the right to tell people what they're doing with this film so yeah to me i guess you know oh well but yeah uh the next bit of news is black widow is still in theaters may 2021 uh that surprised me. I thought they would announce that it would be on Disney Plus, but I guess that's cool. May 2021. I hope that's the official release date because it's already been over a year since that first trailer dropped. I just cannot. I cannot wait for this film. It's like, oh my god, it's been, it's been such a long wait. It feels like <laughs> this film feels like it's just been a delayed, 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 delayed. Same thing with Wonder Woman 84. And yeah, so the next thing is Hawkeye series with Kate Bishop as one of the main characters. A lot of people have been snapping behind the scenes images of this. And I think it's obvious because of the fact that, you know, they're filming in New York City and like the busy streets of New York City. So you're going to, of course, expect someone to take a picture of it. And, you know, it's like it's New York City. It's such a big city with so many people. Of course, if you see someone filming this, it's like, especially Jeremy Renner, since he's an Avenger, lots of people will be like, hey, look, that's Jeremy Renner. And, oh, wait, he has a bow and arrow. He's probably, and there's a camera following him. That's probably the Hawkeye series. So uh, a lot of people have been talking about the behind the scenes. A lot of people are simping for Kate Bishop. Uh, you know, I cannot wait for this, for this, for this sh series. I did think the logo looked stupid uh, and you know anyways I'm hyped up for this and I cannot wait to see this uh, at first I thought the series idea was stupid because Hawkeye isn't that big of a character and you know I didn't think it'd be smart to make a series but you know giving you know I would rather see the Hawkeye series than a Black Widow film honestly uh, but 
you know, I think it's going to be cool seeing the behind the scenes pictures looks pretty cool. And, you know, it's going to be like kind of like mentoring, like, you know, Hawkeye, Clint Barn is going to is going to mentor Kate, Kate Bishop and the ropes of what it's meant to be Hawkeye. And yeah, uh, one thing, the big news that I did not expect at all is that Abomination will be in She-Hulk series. Yes, that Abomination from the Incredible Hulk film, he's going to be in it. I did not expect that. I did not think that would happen. I never in a million years I wouldn't have bet on it. And I've told people I love that Incredible Hulk film, and one of the reasons why is because I like Abomination. I love Edward Norton's Hulk. Of course, we're not getting Edward Norton because we still have Mark Ruffalo. But uh, getting Abomination back, imagine him breaking out of prison and being like, "I'm going after Hulk." That would be real cool. I cannot wait to see that. And to me, that was some news that I did not expect to see dropped. And, you know, that to me, you know, I'm finally glad that they're going to end off that part of the Hulk arrow that we did not get to see. But I'm hyped up for the She-Hulk series. By the way, I think this one comes off as an obvious, but Mark Ruffalo has been officially casted for that series. As, well, we already know it, Bruce Banner and Hulk, of course. I don't think that's an, that's something that we had to guess. But, uh, yeah. And another thing is Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be happening in 2023, summer of 2023 to be exact. And the, But before, in 2022, we're, we will be getting a holiday special, which I did not expect to hear. But, you know, that sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, you know, I cannot wait. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. But another thing that they announced is Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight with Oscar Isaac, which we already knew at this point. Uh, they did talk a little bit about it, but, you know, it sounds pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, then the next thing is Secret Invasion series with Nick Fury. Uh, that, to me, sounds pretty cool. I cannot wait to see what they do with that. And, you know, can't wait. But anyways, uh, the next thing is Eternals. And we didn't get anything with Eternals. Uh, but Sama Hayek is in it, which we already know. And to me, she's a Hispanic actress. And she's someone that I grew up with watching a lot. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm happy we're getting a Hispanic in, <laughs> as a hero in the film. We've yet to see that in the MCU. But, yeah. Uh, and then the next few series is Ironheart, Armor Wars, and I Am Group miniseries. Um, Ironheart, to me, sounds like a stupid series. Uh, Armor Wars, same thing. Although, I am a little more hyped up because I did like Don Cheadle as War Machine. Um, and, you know, the I Am Group series sounds like a kid's cartoon. But, yeah. Uh, Secret Invasion, I feel like I didn't talk too much about it. Uh, I did not expect him to make it a series. I remember I, I had heard Nick Fury was getting his own series. Uh, I thought it would be an origin series. I'm glad they didn't do that because I want to see Secret Invasion. Uh, I feel like they were going to plan on doing Secret Invasion as a Marvel thing, like an Avengers level t thing, but guess not. Uh, but this is still pretty cool. All of these shows, all, a lot of these give me a lot of goosebumps. Uh, the number one thing that does hype me up is Christian Basgord, the God Butcher, and the Fantastic Four finally being confirmed. We didn't get a cast about it, but yeah, uh, to me, I'm hyped up with everything they're doing you know disney disney plus finally is giving us content because all they've given us is mandalorian and you know i was actually planning on unsubscribing from disney because i was like you're not giving me the content i want you're not giving me the stuff i want so it's like why should i still be here and you know they came out and were like hey you know what we got all these shows we got all these movies coming out and so i was like oh <laughs> it's like now i gotta stay it's like i gotta see and what they do with all of this and you know i'm hyped up uh you guys know you guys know me uh from the series that i'm most hyped up for is probably the loki series from the trailers uh you know i'm hyped up for abomination i'm hyped up for everything really and you know uh the most surprising thing here was abomination returning that to me was something that i just did not expect uh coming in uh but yeah anyways that's gonna be really it for the video uh, th i didn't want to make this video too long i was planning on making this a podcast episode which i guess you can technically say because my podcast episodes are either 20 minutes or longer but you know i didn't want to make it too long because today i'm busy i'm i'm planning on doing something else today and also this was my actually my second attempt of making this video because the first attempt i kept messing up a lot Mostly because I didn't have my notes, which I have them right here, which is why I kept looking over there, which is actually how I do my podcast. I have my notes over there. I read them. I, I talk to the mic and, you know, I talk and look at the whatever I'm, I'm looking at. 
And so for you guys got to basically see a behind the scenes of how I do my podcast episode. And if you're new to the channel, I do have a podcast on the channel. There's a playlist. So just click that subscribe button with notification bells. And you'll know when I got podcasts. Uh, basically, this is like my whole seating area. I got my chair right here. I got the mic here connected. And then I also got the a little a little headset so I can hear myself clearly. Um, if the, the voice sounds pretty good. Uh, I got the office over here. I got a MacBook over here. I can't really show you too much about my desk, but I'll do a behind the scenes someday of where I do my podcast. It's not th nothing that cool. Uh, you know, I don't really have that much. It's, it is this corner that I have, and I guess that's pretty cool. Uh, I do have a lot of wires there because my TV is connected up there with my PlayStation, my Nintendo Switch, and a lot of things. So, yeah, I don't know why I'm mentioning all of this, but, yeah, uh, you know, I want to thank you guys for being part of today's video. This was a long video. Right now, I'm really thirsty because... Since this isn't a podcast episode, I didn't want to stop and drink water because in podcasts, I typically just keep going and going and going. And I feel like right now I'm out of breath. And that happens with a lot of my videos where I'm just running out of breath after a podcast. If a video is longer than 20 minutes, my voice is just dying. And that's why in the podcast, you hear me drink a lot of water. But yeah, it does give me a good excuse to drink water. So I guess that's pretty good uh, for me. And, you know, I, I'm i hyped up for this Disney Plus era. I'm finally glad that Disney Plus is getting their things together. And that's a lot of content they're providing. And I didn't even get to mention all of it. Because remember, there's still a lot of Star Wars shows coming out. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to watch all of them. I, I got to watch Mandalorian because it was great. I feel like a lot of them just didn't interest me. The Ashoka Tano series sounds pretty good. Mandalorian Season 3 sounds pretty good. Uh, I do think they overdid it with the Star Wars stuff, but, you know, oh well. It is what it is. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for being part of this channel. I want to thank you guys for taking the time of your day. And since you took 20 minutes to be in this video, you know, might as well hit that subscribe button. Like, you know what? Oh, apologies. Uh, you, you might as well hit that subscribe button with notification bells to be not notified when I upload. I upload daily film talk content. So anyways, I want to thank you guys for being part of today's video. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, peace.